Big Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters back at marketing. The last episode about doing a narrative nonfiction podcast, kind of gotten great feedback on that. So if you're interested in doing podcast production, especially narrative nonfiction, but really just storytelling, check out that last episode, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Get you subscribed to everything. You'll see that last episode there. On this episode, this is the audio version of my weekly newsletter. It goes out every Friday morning. If you want it in a written format, it's really easy to get through, probably three to five minutes. It's about how to grow your podcast, make better podcast. That's all at bigpodcast.com. The audio version, this episode, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it. I have heard a lot in the last few weeks about NFTs and Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's been going around, I think it was 2010 that I met this guy. Should have listened to him. Crazy guy, right? Keeps telling me about how the government's going to come seize everything. Anyway, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. He kept talking about it. And the guy's so nuts. I'm thinking like, who is this guy? But I was aware of it, right? Bubbled under for a few years. Then boom, went crazy. Elon Musk got involved. Boom, went crazy. And now it's still a lot higher than it was when this dude was talking about it. I don't know. It was 10 bucks, 100 bucks. Who knows? Now it's 50 something thousand dollars, 60,000 depending on when you look at it, you know, maybe I would have made a lot of money. But with that said, I didn't. And as a disclaimer, I'm not going to give you any advice about cryptocurrency. I do want to talk about how it applies to podcasting, though. Imagine that you're playing the stock market or Bitcoin, whatever else. A lot of these guys that do that, they're trying to make a thousand little transactions all the time. Day traders, right? Get in there, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. And they're going for a tenth of a point. Make that move. Tenth of a point. Make that move. And they make a little bit of money each time. What they're trying to do is they're trying to maximize whatever outcome that they want. It's usually not the big swings that happen during the day. It's little bitty swings. And you think about that, your podcast is the same way. The potential is there with something like NFT or with Bitcoin But it doesn't usually work out for people that are trying to do the little bitty transactions. There's simply too many things that can go wrong in a thousand transactions as opposed to putting your money in it and leaving it there. Like if I'd listened to this dude back in 2010, that would have worked out great for me. Wouldn't have had to do a thing. Put 10, 20 bucks, 100 bucks in, whatever. Wouldn't have had to do a thing. I could have gone in there, cashed out. Probably would have a long time ago by now, honestly. Made my money, walked away. If I'd really gotten into it, what I would have done is invested in 2010 and then 2011 and then 2012. Been consistent about it. Not worried about those little transactions, those daily transactions, but simply shown up, spent time in the game, kept putting something into it. That is your podcast. That same thing will work for you and your podcast. If you focus on the fundamentals, which is being consistent and showing up and bringing value to every episode that you do, and if you keep at it for a while, you will get where you want to go. Is it sexy? No. Is it stimulating? No. But you will get the results that you say that you are looking for. In this issue of Big Podcast Insider, I've got a big yet very simple opportunity for you to build an incredibly dedicated audience. It doesn't sound sexy. It's not sexy. But if you're looking for subscribers, if you're looking for sponsors, you can make at least 5,000% more per listener than the average podcaster. The average podcaster, well, I'll tell you some behind the scenes here. COVID struck. I'm working on this show. They come to me, hey man, we don't know what we're going to do. Looks like everything's going in lockdown. We really need to make some money. I said, all right. We want to throw some ads on this thing. Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. About 25 CPM. And they guy said, what? 25 CPM? That's cost per thousand. $25 for every thousand downloads that you're getting. Not a lot of money. I mean, not bad. This thing's getting a lot of downloads. But, you know, if you're to this point where you think you're going to have to do anything, and I think we all got a little bit scared when COVID hit, 
everything's on lockdown. We didn't know what we were going to do. So I can understand this. And he said, actually, I'm looking at about two to three dollars per CPM. And I'm thinking, what are you doing, man? <laughs> two to three dollars. Let's say you're getting 10,000 downloads per episode. Just throwing that number out there. All right. You're making 20 or 30 bucks. Is that really going to help you to do all this work for 20 or $30? No, probably not. To do all the work for two to $300? No, eh, not really. Not really. Because one, it's a lot of work to set the thing up. You got to go in and redo the episodes or put in dynamic ads or something like that. The other thing that you're doing is you've got this audience and you've built this reputation with them. You built this relationship with them. And all of a sudden you're throwing ads in there just to make a few bucks. You're damaging that relationship that could be worth a whole lot more. They used to say this. They say you're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. And that's what that was. However, I've got a way that if you've got a small audience, you can make a lot more money than even $25 CPM. And it's really niche marketing is what it is. That's what most of us do in the podcasting space when you think about it. That 2 to $3, that might work for you if you got something like Call Her Daddy with a huge audience. Basically, it's a general topic show that's kind of niched down. It's teenage girls or maybe 40-year-old men. <laughs> I don't know who's listening to it. They know, though, it's got a big audience and we've got a huge audience. Let's say half a million downloads per episode. I don't know, 100,000 downloads per episode, whatever. That adds up. That money stacks up very nicely. So let's get into it. This is something that did exist. Now it doesn't exist. This is where you can step in with your podcast, pick up those crumbs, and those crumbs are pretty good. It's the death of local newspapers. You could also argue that there's a death of local broadcast radio. Think about Howard Stern. I realize that he's gone to satellite. However, satellite is included in this. It might as well be satellite if you've got a Howard Stern, a generic Howard Stern that comes out of New York or comes out of Los Angeles and they syndicate him in Nashville, in Memphis, in St. Louis, in Indianapolis, in Atlanta, in Boise, Idaho, in Salt Lake City, maybe not Salt Lake City, <laughs> but they got their own version of that, right? I know a guy here in Nashville, Christian guy, real cool dude. He's on hundreds of stations. He's out of Nashville. That is an itch audience, but it is not local. If you listen to a broadcast station, though, they are still doing local content, even if they've got a syndicated afternoon, even if they've got a syndicated lunchtime, drive time, evening show. They got traffic and weather. Here's the issue, though. Traffic, how do you do your traffic? I've got Apple Maps, Google Maps. I don't need the radio for that. Weather, how are you doing it? The same way. The local newspaper in Nashville, and this is a big city, over 1 million people. Tomorrow's issue, it closes at 5 p.m. tonight. They print it in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is three hours away. They got to lay everything out. They've got to print them on paper. They've got to get them on trucks and bring them into Nashville to distribute them the next morning. That is not quick. By the time the paper gets to you, you already know what's going on because you've got the internet, you've got television, you've got radio. As I mentioned, though, a lot of that stuff is syndicated. Other than the news or maybe a 5 a.m. show on your local television station, there probably isn't much local stuff going on. That's the opportunity for podcasters because nobody is doing this. The newspaper can't get it to you quickly enough. Because of that, they're losing an audience. Because of that, there's not enough revenue coming in. Because of that, they can't hire local reporters. Television and radio, they're competing with syndication, with satellites, stuff that's better produced, arguably more entertaining and fun to listen to or watch. So they're not doing it, but people still want local news. That's you with your podcast. And it doesn't even have to be local. It can be hyper-local. I've talked about this before. The most profitable podcast that I have ever done per listener is a local podcast that I did for the neighborhood that I live in unbelievably profitable. And that's where I get that 5,000%, 50 times the CPM that you would get normally. It's not bad. And more or less, it was just a calendar. Pretty easy to produce. I could do it in one take with a few edits, 10 minutes, let people know what's going on in the neighborhood. Easy. You know, who would want something like that? Local coffee shops. 
the local real estate agent who wants to own the market. It's not everybody that they're looking for. They just want that few hundred people that can actually walk to the coffee shop or drive past the coffee shop. That realtor, she's not going to be able to sell a house in Los Angeles if she's in Nashville. She might not even want to work all of Nashville because certain parts of Nashville are more profitable than other parts. So you see where I'm going with this. The death of local newspapers, a huge opportunity for podcasting. I've got more information on this. It's newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Next up, cancel culture and podcasting. Cancel culture does not apply to podcasting. I got into podcasting in 2005. It was an offshoot of radio for a lot of people. We, early podcasters, built it and we were resilient. Nobody was listening, but we kept showing up and we brought people to us. Things have changed though. We've got way too many podcasters. We've gotten soft. We keep talking about cancel culture, playing the victim card, expecting some internet properties, YouTube, Facebook, name one, to bring an audience to us and automatically distribute whatever it is that we want. People either want what you want or they don't. Sometimes they don't want to deal with you. I want to take it back to the local thing. If I say, I want to turn my house into a check cashing store, a liquor store, and a strip club. You could try to do it, but there are consequences. It's not cancel culture because somebody's not going to let me do that. People just don't want to be associated with that. You wouldn't want to live next to it. Same thing with your podcast. Some people don't want you on their property. So you can't complain, cancel culture, cancel culture. Oh my God. Build your own, man. Be like those early podcasters. Build the network yourself. Figure out a way to get your podcast out to people yourself. You don't need to go to YouTube or Facebook. Either do it or you don't. Nobody is censoring you. People and companies might not want to be involved with you, but it doesn't keep you from doing it. What I've got linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. It's a great episode with Mark Marin. A lot of comics, Mark Marin is one of them. They are edgy. Dave Chappelle, edgy. Nobody's censoring Dave Chappelle. They're not censoring Mark Marin, but they don't want to necessarily be involved with them. There's a huge difference. If you don't understand it, learn it. Even if you do understand it, this is a great episode. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I've got it linked. Next up, this is funny to me. It's the Charlotte Podcast Festival, also known as the Clit Festival. CLT. Is that right? Is it just CLT or is it CLIT? I don't know. Charlotte Podcast Festival was named one of the best podcast conferences by Buzzsprout. It is worth a look. It is virtual. It is free. November 30th through December 4th. Again, free and open to the public. It's got panel discussions. It's got seminars on podcasting, like how to record, edit, host, market podcast. There is a virtual networking event for podcast fans. You should check out that virtual networking event. There was an event here in Nashville. It's been a couple of years. It's called Pod X. Pod X was at the convention center. The convention center is huge. There could have been 10,000 people there. They wouldn't have filled it up. So Pod X shows up at the convention center. I guess they think a lot of folks are going to show up. Mm, I don't know. 200 people did. 200 people. Didn't work out. They had a lot of big sponsors. Netflix was there. I did an episode in the Netflix studio when I was there, but podcasters themselves, except for those 200 people, fans did not show up. However, the best thing for me was able to connect with those fans in a way that I wouldn't have normally been able to. And they weren't fans of me. They were just fans of podcast. I remember talking to a young lady. She might've been, I don't know, 18, early twenties. She was really into D and D really into D and D this thing. It was kind of like, you imagine comic-con or harry potter or a star trek convention but for podcasters it was that kind of vibe there were guys dressed up like superheroes and aliens and things but they were in the podcast not people i would have normally met but i was there and a great time talking to them and it was really cool because i was able to hear people who were listening to podcasts that i don't make and podcasts that i don't normally listen to and i got to find out why They really liked podcasting, why they were so enthusiastic that they were going to come to Nashville at an event that only 200 people were at when they could have held 10,000. I mean, that's the hardcore people. 
Why were they there? So that was great. I would suggest you, if you go to the Charlotte Podcast Festival, CLT Podcast Fest, check out one of those fan rooms. You can really get a vibe for why people are listening to the podcast, why they think it's so powerful, and bring that to your audience. Bring that into your podcast. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has it. Next up, ACX audiobook production using Audacity. You know I'm a big fan of Audacity. I'm recording and editing this podcast on Audacity right now. If you're considering using your podcasting talents to produce audiobooks, which I know a lot of people are, there's a short and very cheap course from a man named Mike Adams that is amazing. Mike has a great Audacity course. It's on Udemy, and I wrote off Udemy. I said, Ugh, junk on Udemy, man. That's one step above free YouTube videos. Even the free YouTube videos are better than Udemy a lot of the times. But I saw this course by Mike Adams. It's Audacity course. He won me over. I said, man, Mike. You're charging like 20 bucks for this thing. It's actually really good. Should be like $100 or more. He said, I want to make it affordable to people. He's back with that same philosophy. He has an ACX audiobook production using Audacity course. It will be very helpful for you if you're looking to get into audiobooks, whether or not you're using Audacity. I've used Audacity for hundreds of projects. Like I said, I'm using it for this podcast. I used it for the audiobook version of my book, Big Podcast. If you haven't heard that, bigpodcast.com slash book. You can download it for free. I bring these things up because I'm pretty comfortable with Audacity. I watch this course from Mike, still learn some things. It's worth it. If you use Audacity, if you're looking to get into audiobooks, check it out. I've got everything linked. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. UCAST, Podcast Advertising Marketplace. This is a true story. This came through just a couple of hours before I did this newsletter. (laughs) I got a request to run podcast ads for a male grooming company. You know what I'm saying? Here's what they wrote me. We came across Build a Big Podcast and think your content is a great fit for us. My name's Ann, and I'm reaching out on behalf of the audio marketing team at Manscaped. Manscaped. (laughs) Use your imagination. So I go to their site, They've got products like the Lawnmower 4.0. They've got anti-chafing boxer briefs. None of it has to do with podcasting, but I guess they feel like, I don't know, I've got a male audience. I don't, strangely enough. Well, half men. I've got a lot of women that listen to this podcast. And maybe these guys thought it would be a good gift. The women who listen to Build a Big Podcast, maybe they're like a nicely shaved man, nicely manicured lawn. Maybe they'd be into manscaped didn't make sense to me. If you've got your email listed in your RSS feed, you've probably gotten requests like this. This is exactly what I was talking about when I was talking about CPM advertising. These are the guys that are paying two, three bucks for every thousand. They don't care. It's cheap enough and it's broad enough. All men or maybe some women who like a well-groomed man and they've got the stats on their webpage. You know, it's marketing. They got to make the men insecure. (laughs) It's all the things that women have had to deal with for years. They've got that for men on the Manscaped site. That's the kind of thing that if you heard, you'd be like, what is he talking about? That's not at all why I'm listening to this podcast. However, if I told you about something that was going to be helpful for you in growing an audience, getting more people to your podcast, making a podcast that people actually care about, that kind of ad might be welcomed by you. It'd be a lot more likely to be welcomed by you. And if you're looking to run ads like that on your podcast, there's a service called Ucast that you may want to look at. I have not used this service. This is not an endorsement. This is not an advertisement. I simply want to keep you up to date on options for you to monetize your podcast. And matchmaker sites, that's basically what this is, that seems to be where things are headed. You tell them what your podcast is about. You tell them maybe demographics, download numbers, subjects that you were talking about they match you up with somebody who would like to advertise on your podcast. And in theory, somebody that your listeners would like to hear about. If you want to find out more information about it, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you like this newsletter, by the way, the audio version of the newsletter, bigpodcast.com, that's where to subscribe. If you sign up for the podcast, you will continue to get this, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. While you're there, sign up for the mailing list. I will make sure that Every Friday morning, you get the Big Podcast Insider email newsletter. It is free. You can unsubscribe at any time. 
It'll take you three to five minutes to go through. I'm going to keep you up to date on these new opportunities like UCAST, keep you up to date on opportunities that you can use on your existing podcast, such as going more local or bringing that local energy, going more niche with your content to help that CPM go up, to help listener interaction go up, to help attract the audience that you want. I've got it all. I'm a marketing guy. I just happened to get into radio because I wanted to market myself. And it's been that way from day one. 1991, I walked into a radio class at the University of Memphis, sat down. He says, why are you here? I said, I'm in a band. I want to get a job at the station. This is how to do that. I'm going to play my own music. He said, you can't do that. That's illegal. But I stuck around and I'm still here, not only in the radio, but into podcasting, but bringing that marketing energy of building an audience, making people care about your stuff. And for you, making money with your message, with your voice, with the episodes that you create. So go to bigpodcast.com, check it out, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the email newsletter, and I will see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.